Okay. You don't have to know the names, but this part here controls your impulses and it helps you with recollection. It's a working memory. You know how to operate the washing machine. You know how to operate the, the dryer or the microwave because you have this working memory. It's all there in the front. But this front part has still many subdivisions. And you would know where you are. You would also know how to count, how to read because of your frontal lobe. And it is being registered in the ventral part of your forehead. And also fear is being processed there. Aside from the amygdala, the forehead also processes fear. But aside from that, attention, reorientation, and speech is also found in your forehead. The interrelationship you have with people is also in your forehead. The movement and the sensation. So when all these things come together, scientists saw that Einstein's brain is, has a very, very robust neurons on this part in the premotor as well as in the primary motor cortex and these are in charge of processing you know the movement as well as the thinking they go together and so people are very they are brilliant people are very fast in organizing very fast yung pick up very fast mag move mag execute ng kanilang mga plano no but one very important thing I learned about the forehead when I was in Germany studying my doctoral degree is that forehead is not just a rational region of the brain. It is in charge for attachment, intimacy, and bonding. So I love you with, we don't, you don't say I love you with all my heart. I, you say I love you with all my forehead. This afternoon, I would like to pose a question. Is bonding the neuroscience of, heal, of sealing because sealing is in the forehead? Then you could answer that same question after my presentation. Our learning objective is to understand why sealing is in the forehead from the point of view of neuroscience or neurobiology. So, abangan nyo yan. And you could refute my investigation and my evaluation and my argument and uh, we could discuss about it and we will see who wins. So, I landed on the lab that studied brain cells. It's very interesting that God hid all his plans from me. I had no basic knowledge about neuroscience. We have no neuroscience subjects in UP Diliman, right? We only have cells. And somatic cells behave far differently from your neurons in the brain. They don't have, although they are connected from one with another, your neurons have this basic component of synapses, which are not found in your somatic cells. They are somatic, meaning cells of the body. My professor told me to investigate what is the impact of emotional stress in the infant forehead. Gets nyo ba yan? For example, you have this infant there and you've got to know what is going on in his or her forehead by in after he is or she is induced or exposed to an emotional stress like separation why infant because there are already studies on fats by the way we cannot study of course we could not cut you know, uh, brains of human beings. Well, they are still alive, so we use rat models. Previous studies show that when rats are exposed to enriched environment, like they have these levers, they have ladders, they have spinning wheel, <clears throat> then they have 
bigger neurons, they have robust neurons, they have uh, increased number of neurons and increased, you know, extension of synapses. But when rats, these ones are adult rats, are just left alone, isolated and deprived, you know, of friends and enriched environment, then um, their neurons are not very, very, very well. They are not strong, they were not big, they were not, they don't have extended synapses. Wala akong alam sa brain cells, wala akong alam sa neurons, wala akong alam sa iba't ibang cells in the brain because I studied only cancer cells while I was in Diliman. And uh, the reason why I'm vegan because I have seen the impact of phytochemicals, you know, ingredients of plants that God had put in them so that you would stay vibrant, you would stay healthy and strong and long lived on this planet. And so I panicked because I don't know much about uh, what I was going to do. And uh, you could just imagine studying from the scratch. And because God called me to do so, then nothing was impossible. So I studied infant rats. You know, one important trick when you are choosing your experimental uh, participants, like mom, uh, Vicky a while ago explained, you've got to know which experimental material you're going to use. In this case, I chose rats that mimic human behaviors like attachment, like a good eyesight and good smell. And in this case, I used, you know, the digus or trumpet tailed rats because they mimic human attachment during infancy. So they mimic both the visual and auditory functions of human infants. When they're born, they could hardly see, but their visual system is already functioning and uh, they, they could hear, you know, the, their mother's voice. But to make the long story short, I'm gonna show you my findings. So I became a serial killer of rats. Pili lang kayo. Anong klase yung pagpatay ng rats? Killing them softly? Or killing them right away? Or make them sleep first? Kaya ayaw ko nang kumain ng meat. Buti nga hindi kayo naging manok or baka. Because uh, I felt bad when I kill my rats every time, but in order for me to graduate and for the cause of science, I had to do it. I learned from my findings that forehead, not other regions in the brain, in the, in the forebrain, is emotional. When I compared, you know, the brain cells in the forehead versus the other versus the brain cells in the other parts of the forebrain, which are in charge for movement, they don't respond to the separation. So what I did, I have many groups of rats, and uh, one group is not separated from the mom, the other group is separated only for a short time, and uh, the other group is separated for the long time. And there's another group that is separated just for a short time and then return to the cage. And you call it separation plus reunion. And there's another group that is separated for a long time and then reunited with the mother. Anong equivalent nun? May mga nanay na iniiwan yung anak. For the first three years ng buhay ng anak nila, pupunta sila abroad, right? Babalik sila. That's a long separation. 
Meron ding mga nanay, every day, pabalik-balik, sa separate sa anak. And then, uh, uuwi. And then, um, these psychoneurobiologists would like to know the interpretation or would like to evaluate the result of this separation between the mother and the infant during the first three years of the infant life. So, brain cells in the forehead react violently against separation, especially when you separate your child or your infant between the first three years of his life. So separation is very, very, very violent for your brain, for the infant brain cells during the first three years of life. You look at the pictures here with them meaning this is a representative of hundreds and hundreds of brain cells. In this case, they are astrocytes from the forehead of rats that stayed with mom. Them means the mother rat. And when rats were separated only once from their mom for seven hours, then the extensions got lessened. There's decreased of synapses, indicating that uh, it intervenes, separation intervenes in the brain development of the infant. Gets nyo ba ako? Okay. You would see in this figure, you would see there is that intact cell body when uh, the rat stayed with mom, but the cells are damaged when rats are separated from mom. There is an intact cell with very good extensions, but there is a shrunk cell body when the rat is separated from mom. Yung mga nanay na pinapabayaan niyo yung mga anak nyo, bawiin nyo na habang maaga pa. If you want to have their brains developed, very, very well. But this is the trick. Even if the rats are separated from their mom, when you then they are reunited, then there are the extensions of reunited brain cells revert back to normal as if nothing happened. So, why? Because the infant brain is still plastic, meaning it is malleable, it could recover very fast. Okay. But what happens with the brain cell when, it, when the rat is constantly or repeatedly separated from the mom? Cells in the forehead try to cope. And so here, there's no significant difference in the extensions between the ones that stayed with mom and the ones that were repeatedly separated. Like, this is equivalent to the every week or month long separation in humans between the first three years of life. So there's no difference. Why? Because the cells cope. The brain cells are trying to cope during development. But when, you know, the rats are reunited with the dam or with their mom, then their brain cells try to get stunted, meaning the stress hormone has an impact after the separation. Okay? Gets new bako. Okay. Sige. Now, what's the relevance of my findings to me personally? I'm not the mother. I don't have a child. 
But what is the relevance of my findings to me? My findings affirm that forehead is a region, a brain region for attachment. And it reacts badly, violently towards separation. Infants are transparent models of attachment. And it, attachment is located in the forehead. It is a divine, universal implant in the whole universe. In 1950s, Dr. Harlow made an experiment. He's a famous psychologist in his own right. And uh, he observed this principle of attachment on baby monkeys. And so he made two, ter two mothers. One, a wire mother with a feeding bottle. May gatas yan. And the other one is a terry cloth mother without a feeding bottle. The baby monkeys would just stare at the feeding bottle, indicating ng bahala gutom, basta kasama ko nanay ko. Indicating that a, a child, even without knowledge of attachment, has this instinct to get attached to something flurry that feels like mom, either surrogate or real, okay? So, that's the universal principle of attachment in the forehead. And this has been, you know, observed in the whole range of animal kingdom. Here is Conrad Lawrence. He is a Nobel laureate, a behaviorist, animal behaviorist. And he studied, he identified how attachment is being done or performed by fowls. Ito na yon. He learned that birds identify the first moving object the day they're hatched. Pag ikaw ang nakita nilang gumagalaw, ikaw yung susundan nila for the rest of their lives. So, nag-experiment itong scientist na ito. Kaya kahit saan siya pumunta, kakain man siya, tatalon dito yung kanyang mga manok at kanyang mga gansa. Kasi siya yung unang nakita nila na gumagalaw nung nabuka sila galing sa itlog. And you could look at funny pictures pag nasa, nasa river siya, nandudoon din yung kanyang mga mga ducks and chickens because to them siya yung tatay nila here nilagay yung itlog ng bibi doon sa gansa kaya akala ng bibi o pato gansa siya following the mother gansa because attachment is in the brain among the youths when you're in Europe, you could see vast and vast expanse of lands, parareha yung kulay, mga puti na mga sheep. But how do you know? How do these youths recognize ito yung nanay nila, yung pala? Youths identify scent of their own lamb within the first two hours of giving birth. When they miss this, the mother and the you the sheep and the ewe will not know each other. And this is equivalent to the first three years of your infant life. That should not be disturbed. Mom and child should go together because if, it's going, if it is disturbed, the, your son or your child will just recognize you as parent but without emotional bonding. In rats, ganun din. So, the, the pups relied on the odor and texture of their mother's nipples. Kaya di ba pag mga aso, bagong panganak, dinidilaan nila yung kanilang mga pups. Ang mga rats, dinid, dumidede to know the texture and the smell of the nipples of their mom. And this should be done during the first week of their life. Pag maskip, 
they will be unfamiliar or they will be strangers to each other. Why? Because God implants attachment in the brain. And there are devotion hormones, not just in you, but also in lower animals. So scientists study about the two kinds of voles. One is very polygamous, solitary, and no maternal care, no paternal care, non-territorial, non-aggressive. But the other set of prairie vole is very having, is very aggressive, very territorial. And they learned that um, the one with high oxytocin, oxytocin is the trust hormone, the attachment hormone between the uh, between spouses, between child and the mother. And the ones with less hormones on devotion, this oxytocin and vasopressin, then they have, you know, an attached personality and they are non-colonial, indicating that God is looking after its crea His creation. He is looking after us and provide everything, what we need, even if we don't recognize we need them. So what is the relationship of my study with sealing in the forehead? Oh, as I analyze a little bit more, that's why I love IFL, because God would lead you to experience something so that you would be effective teachers effective declarers of his majesty to your students. Forehead is highly emotional and very intimate. Intimacy is attachment primarily to God as the infant to its mom. And that's why God said, can a mother forget her sucking child? Yeah, she may forget, but I don't forget you. I am attached to you. I made you attached to me. It's in your forehead. And so I realized that those who are intimate and genuinely attached to God will be sealed in the last days. So sealing has nothing to do, you know, with following the rules and regulations. It has something to do with this so-called relationship, this intimacy this attachment and i like it the angel goes forth to seal the servants of god in their foreheads it is the mark which angels but not human eyes can read for the destroying angel must see this mark of redemption what is this mark of redemption it is a mark of intimacy it is the mark of attachment if you want to go to heaven that is not to escape hell it is because you want to see Jesus. Nami miss mo siya. Do you miss Jesus? I miss him so much. I'm homesick of him. So, there's a group of people who would be attached with Jesus in the last days. Ang kanilang theme song ay hopelessly devoted to you. Ang kanilang Filipino theme song ay Ikaw ang pangako. Ikaw ang pangako. ba? Taglay ng isang between. These are the group of people who are panting or homesick. Like the deer panting for streams of water. Their souls are panting for Jesus. They thirst for his presence. They want him to be with them. And they want them. And they want to be with Jesus. Do you belong to this group? I want to be in this group. My goodness. And this is the reason, this is the feeling of this prodigal son returning to his father. Because separation is too much to handle. He had to go back home. Why? Because his brain is made to attach to his father. It hurts being separated from his father.
And this is the reason why Jesus cried on Calvary, sighing, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Nasan ka? That is not uh, blaming God for taking Jesus. Jesus wanted the presence of his father because separation hurts very, very much. A separation hurtful to you? There is no divorce in your brain. There is no divorce region in the brain. God is the God of reconciliation and devotion. There is only the region for attachment. But there are also a group of people who do not love God. I don't want to be in this group. The Lord is soon to come. There must be a refining, winnowing process in every church, for there are among us wicked men who do not love God. So aside from me realizing that my forebrain is the region for attachment and that my relationship with Jesus, my friendship with him plays a major role in the sealing. The decision to obey his commandments is just the product of that attachment. So, walang hassle. You know, when um, you love the person, you will do everything. And I felt I... I was very, I was very glad to see Dr. Mergal handing, you know, water to his wife because he looks after her and her needs while presenting. Not observe nyo ba yun? I did. Ang lolo ko was the first and last person I saw combing the hair of my grandma every time, every after she took a bath. Husbands, perhaps you have not combed your wife's hair. And I've never seen one after that. But my grandpa was very diligent in combing my grandma's hair every time, every day after she takes a bath. And he would tell her, Inday, dali diri, husayun tabuhok mo, meaning come here, I'll comb your hair. Why? Because he loves his wife. They are attached with each other. Goodness. I'm not making stories. You look at the you look at the whiteboard. It says there, you are slaves to someone you obey. You obey because you love the person. You don't obey because you'd like to do it. Matic obedience is automatic when there is attachment. Right? Okay, love is expressed in obedience. Those who love God have the seal of God in their foreheads, meaning they are attached and work the works of God. In Psalm 119, 163, 174, and Psalm 40, verse 8, David declared, I hate and abhor lying. I want to obey you because I love you. But your law, yes, I do love. My delight. Have you tasted ice cream delight? I remember when I was little, every time there was this dirty ice cream, you know, that would pass by the house of my grandma because she loved me so much. Even if I had too much sugar already, she would always get a penny and buy me ice cream delight. Yung dinidilaan niyo ba? Is God's law delightful to you? I delight in obeying Jesus. We are here, my group and I are here because we love to be here. We want, this is God's work and we want to share what we know to you. So thank you for making us a part of your conference. Happy is that people whose God is the Lord because they want to be with Him. We have this song, one of my favorite songs, I love thee, I love thee. I love thee, my Lord. Thy name be my theme and 
Thy love be my song. See? And these are the people who would see Jesus' face one day because His name is in their forehead. They are attached to this name. At the mention of this name, they get excited. When they read this name, they get excited. I want to belong to this group. And now, this group of people are practicing looking to Him, thinking of Him. He will be formed within the hope of glory. It's like my grandpa holding my hands every time going to that evangelistic meeting. That though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because he was with me. This is the spirit, you know, of martyrs willing to die for Jesus. Won't exchange work or study for Sabbath keeping. Why? Because they love Jesus. They want to obey him. So the neuroscience behind the ceiling, from the, from the point of view of my discovery, is that my forehead is a, has, is a divine implant for intimacy and attachment, particularly with God, that would spread through the people around me. And decision-making, my decision to obey, is just a product of or result of that intimacy. So, will you agree with me that bonding is the neuroscience of sealing? I hope you've learned something this afternoon. Dr. Rowena, we, uh, we really appreciate your presentation. The more I listen to your presentation, the more I am attached to my wife. <laughs> so, your presentation has really impact in my life this afternoon. So, because of that impacting... Uh, yeah, yeah, impacting message that you have presented to us. The Southern Asia Pacific Division would like to um, express our appreciation. Thank you. And I would like to read the citation here. Tri-Union Science Education and Adventist Scientist Conference, Southern Asia Pacific Division of the 70th Adventist Education Department present the Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Ruina Antimano for imparting your valuable insights as one of the guest speakers during the Tri-Union Science Educators and Adventists Conference held at, on August 4 to 6, 2022 at Mountain View College with the theme Integration of Creation science in teaching and mission. Your worthy presentation has affirmed and fortified the faith of the Seventh-day Adventist Church on the doctrine of creation as a fundamental anchor of the science of salvation. Given on the sixth day of August 2022 at Mountain View College, Valencia City, Bukidnon. Signed, Dr. Sumindap, uh, myself, and Dr. and Pastor Roger Kadarma. Thank you, sir. For making us a part of this. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Wow. So we learned a lot this afternoon. How I wish that would be the concluding part of our uh, program. But I understand there's another video presentation. I don't know if you can still bear with us. Uh, how many minutes that video presentation? Huh? 20? 30 minutes? Wow. But this is all about uh, um, this is all about mission. How we are going to enter into postmodern and secular society. 
So if you are interested with this, then we can go ahead, right? Okay, so there is a thumbs up, so we can go ahead. Okay, so we'll introduce the speaker. Just actually, my sister in law was saying earlier that Mam Ruena is the finale, but she was right, uh, finale in person because uh, this last lecture is uh, the finale by virtual. So, ours uh, next and the last. No, the finale, no, by virtual. Um, he is an alumnus of Adventist University of the Philippines, graduated 1994. He earned his Master's of Arts in Religion from Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies in Selangkaviri in the year 2007. He earned his Doctor of Missiology degree from Philippine Christian University in Manila and a PhD candidate of Asia Graduate School of Theology in Manila. He is also the Interfaith Service Director of Muslim and Secular Postmodern Ministries in Southern Asia Pacific Division. He was Associate Professor of Mission in Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies Seminary and has been teaching in that said school for six years. He is married to Maila Tina Dizon, a graduate of Adventist University of the Philippines, Batch 1992. They were blessed with two sons and they're all grown up, namely John Nevin Dizon, 26 years old, an AUP, an MPH student, and Abby Taylor Dizon, 24 years old, also studying at AUP at Dentistry School. Our finale speaker, for this afternoon session with this topic. Preaching the Postmodern and Secular Society, Dr. Abner P. Dizon. Gandang maga po sa inyong lahat. Binabati ko po kayo mula dito sa West Indonesia Union Mission where I am currently uh, on an itinerary to visit yung mga projects natin sa iba't ibang mga lugar dito. Uh, maraming salamat po, Dr. Margal, for inviting me to share something uh, about how to reach secular people para dito sa inyong Tri-Union Science Educators and Adventist Scientist Conference. Uh, I really wish that I can be there with you right now um, it just so happens na nag-overlap yung schedule ng aking pag-visit dito and itong schedule na ibinigay ni Dr. Margal. Uh, nonetheless, we thank the Lord since mga scientists tsaka mga science educators kayo, we really thank the Lord for technology, right? Um, so, uh, uh, there's so much that we can do nowadays with technology. And so I thank the Lord that uh, a way to record and to share the message kahit na uh, I am very far from where you are right now. So the topic um, that has been um, assigned to me is how to reach secular people or secular community. Uh, let me begin by uh, sharing my screen. Okay. Okay, so ito po ang actually may junior revised con title um, understanding and reaching secular people. Um, it's important to understand them before we begin to try to reach them. And so dito po sa aking hopefully short na presentation, I would like to discuss what are the characteristics of secular people. Uh, in the Philippines, we can call it secularized people. Okay, so let me start with an introduction about the challenge of secular people. Um, all over the world, merong 1.1 billion na mga tao or 16% of the world's population who do not subscribe to any religion at all. Um, according to a, a research group, Sabi niya, one in six 
person globally does not have religious affiliation. And um, the unaffiliated, yun ang tawag sa kanila, or non-religious, is the third largest religious group worldwide. And uh, behind lang siya Christians and Muslims. And it's equal to the Catholic population. 1.1 billion people. So that's that's in the in the global setting. Now, sa Philippine context naman, um, do you know, well, uh, maybe all of all of us know that 92% of the Philippines is uh, subscribed to a Christian religion. 81% are Roman Catholic and 11% are Protestant. 5.6% um, the population natin is Muslim and 2% are traditional religionists. Now, the Philippines is a secular nation in the sense that its constitution guarantees separation of church and state. Uh, the government requires all uh, uh, requires everyone to respect all religious beliefs equally. Of course, nakita natin doon sa uh, inauguration ng presidente ano, na merong limang uh, major religious groups uh, and we praise the Lord na isa ang Seventh-day Adventist Church doon sa nag-represent ng uh, religious community. Um, ang context natin sa Philippines is in spite of the fact na 92% tayo, uh, uh, percent Christian, merong estimated na 11 million non-religionists in the Philippines. Uh, it is then, merong 11 million uh, atheist, secularized people, uh, humanistic, secular people in the Philippines. Um, one uh, Catholic uh, writer says, the Philippines is increasingly secular but still deeply Catholic. In fact, Manila is the best example of the secularizing tendency in the Philippines. Um, now, how do we define secular people? Or how do we describe yung mga secular people? Well, they are disenchanted with religion or they identify themselves more with non-religious values and institutions uh, and for them, life is not centrally focused on religious experience. Hindi yun ang pinaka-importante sa kanila. Also, they may or may not outrightly deny existence of God but generally, they think that humans don't need God. Also, they feel no need to join any religion. And their attitude to Christianity range from indifference to antagonism. Um, okay, now looking at secularism as as a, as a mindset, as a worldview, uh, what are the characteristics? According to uh, Anthony Campolo in the book A Reasonable Faith, um, there are four characteristics of secularism. Number one is contingency. Contingency means Everything that is was caused by some natural phenomenon which preceded it. Now, ang theme natin, uh, ang theme, <laughs> theme, theme ninyo, is integration of creation science in teaching and mission. Pero ang secularism, they do not believe in creation. They believe in evolution. Okay? Because, I mean, uh, they believe that uh, everything that is was caused by some natural phenomenon which preceded it. They also believe in autonomy, in that mankind defines what will be his ultimate destiny. Because they don't believe there's someone outside of humanity. They only believe that uh, we define our destiny. Okay? They also believe in the relativity. Morality is a relative, and depend, uh, a relative, uh, relative thing and depends on historical, social, and cultural context. So... What is good for you may not be good for me. What is moral for uh, for that group of people may not be moral for another group of people. So, meron silang relativity. And then they believe in temporality. Life is all about the here and the now. They don't think about future. They don't think about what happens when you die. Para sa kanila, life ends now. Or life is only about here and now. And so my tendency, okay, uh, I'll move on. Um, to that later on. Ngayon, the Philippines started out as a Christian. Uh, okay, well, in the last 
so we say 400, 300 years or so, 400 years or so, um, Christianity has been very much uh, interwoven uh, in, into our, uh, the fabric of our society. And yet, more and more, Filipinos are becoming secularized. Now, what are the factors contributing to secularization? Um, this is uh, the neo-secularization theory. Uh, the first is existential insecurity. And sabi rito, the greater the insecurity, the more religious people become, uh, uh, the more religious people become. In other words, uh, if there is insecurity, then they turn to God. However, um, when economic, political, and social conditions improve, personal security improves, and religion loses its impact. And that's the reason why many rich people or uh, rich countries or rich communities tend to be less religious because uh, pag may problema sila, they don't need to call on God. They can just use their, their uh, credit card or uh, the, the government can help them and so on and so forth. So, meron security, personal security sila. Existential insecurity produces more uh, religious desire, desire for religion. Second is pluralism. The more ideas a person is exposed to, the more difficult he finds it to be certain that his favorite idea is the right one. In other words, mas marami kang may encounter na, na views, worldviews, and uh, ideas. It's, it's more difficult to say, I am right. This is the only way. This is the only uh, true religion, and so on and so forth. And so, uh, in many cities, because maraming galing sa iba't ibang mga lugar, in order to maintain, um, let's say, harmony, there needs to be pluralism. And in pluralism, you cannot really believe in just one right idea. And then finally, meron tinatawag na privatization. Uh, it, everything becomes private. The non-discussion of religion in public uh, leads uh, some uh, people to feel that religion is a private matter. Um, your religion is yours, my religion is mine, and let's not discuss it in public. Okay, so these three things are factors that contributes to secularization. Some people even say that urbanization also uh, leads to secularization. Education, um, you know, you know what? Education usually is a Western uh, model, the one that we are using right now, is more Western than uh, than anything, and and Westernization actually has a secularization effect in commun on communities. Okay, so um, the tendency of sec secular versus religious, I would like to compare them. Secular people tend to be. Uh, by the way, this is from the United States, but uh, more and more, uh, when I compare it with uh, Philippine context, uh, I can see there's, there's, uh, uh, there's similarities. So the secular, yung mga secular na mga tao, they tend to be male, they tend to be young, they tend to be urban, they tend to be more educated, they tend to be uh, richer, mas, uh, mas maraming... Uh, uh, mas maraming wealth, they tend to be mobile, uh, mas ma, madaling maglipat-lipat ng lugar, they tend to be more uh, public, they tend, tend, to, uh, tend to be more um, uh, industrialized, and ang job nila tend to be more information related. Whereas, yung mga religious, they tend to be female, they tend to be older, they tend to live in rural area, or at least that mindset is rural. They tend to be less educated, or poorer, or more stationary, lagi nakastay lang sa isang lugar, more secluded, more agricultural, and more manufacturing related ang kanilang mga jobs. So, um, as you know, the more religious they are, it's easier to evangelize them. In Adventist Church, uh, we are more successful than sa mga taong religious rather than those who are uh, secular. Um, and and we, we need to find a way. Na how can we balance this na we are able to also reach yung mga secular na mga tao? Um, so, com i-compare natin ang secularism and Christianity. 
sa biblical Christianity, merong mga, okay, there are some themes like prime reality para sa biblical Christianity. The prime, the, uh, yung reality na pinagsimula ng reality is a personal God. Uh, while in humanistic secularism, it's from an inanimate matter uh, and energy. So, doon nagsimula. Ang origin of all, it, sa biblical Christianity, it was created by God. Uh, para sa humanistic secularism, it was cause, it's a cause and effect, it's by chance. Uh, ang nature of man sa biblical Christianity is physical and spiritual and then made in God's image. Samantalang sa humanistic secularism, uh, there is a, it's a phase in natural evolution. Eventually, it will evolve into something else. Uh, meaning of life para sa biblical Christianity is preparation, service, fulfillment, uh, whereas sa humanistic secularism, it's uncertain, it's unknown. There's no, there's no meaning of life. Um, ang basis ng morality para sa biblical Christianity is eternal character of God, okay? which is sa atin, we understand it as being embodied in the Ten Commandments. Samantalang sa humanistic secularism, uh, ang basis of morality is yung contemporary mores, you know, the, the, the customs, traditions, uh, depende sa kultura, depende sa setting. Um, man's condition, as far as biblical Christianity is concerned, is sinful and changing. Whereas sa humanistic secularism, it's imperfect and changing then. Uh, para sa biblical Christianity, improvement, paano mag improve We need spiritual rebirth, be born again. Uh, sa humanistic secularism, uh, it's true human planning and effort para mag-improve ang race. Uh, for biblical Christianity, death is a parenthesis. In other words, it's not yet the end. There will be another one. Pero uh, humanistic secularism, it's the end of everything. Uh, human history for biblical Christianity is influenced by God. There is a purpose. It's a god purpose uh, thing. Samantalang humanistic secularism, uh, is human controlled and puzzling. Uh, walang direction. Okay? Uh, human destiny para sa biblical Christianity is is new being through God's redemption. You become new. Uh, the, the goal is to become new through, uh, to be a new being through God's redemption. Well, as sa humanistic secularism, human destiny is nothingness. Nothingness. So you can see, um, of course, medyo sabihin natin may bias tayo sa biblical Christianity. Uh, but you can also see some of the challenges of being a humanistic, secular person. Okay. Now, what are some some of the main issues if you have a secular worldview? Uh, looking at it from a um, Christian perspective. Number one is atheism or non-religion. They don't believe in God. There is no God, okay, for them. Number two is yung pluralism. Uh, all roads go to heaven or none at all, something like that. Uh, and then contingency, uh, yung concept ng uh, evolution, concept na what, what we have now comes from something. And it, it usually is about uh, not, not God, not supernatural. And then temporality, uh, issue dito is yung hedonism. Yung bang, uh, enjoy life because tomorrow we'll die. Um, our life is just about now. Uh, you only live once. YOLO. <laughs> You've heard of that. Y-O-L-O. -O. You only live once. Um, then, relativity. Morality is relative. It's... Um, so, anyway. There is, there is, however, a spectrum of uh, secularism. Hindi isang klase lang ng secular people ang um, meron. You know? uh, in the Philippines, pwede natin sabihin, it's, uh, ang secularization spectrum is ranging from somewhat religious to ambivalent to somewhat secular to very secular and to ultra-secular. This is also called the unchurched. Yung walang mga simbahan, yung walang religion na, na pina, sinasama, sinasamahan. Now, there was a... Um, an author or, or a researcher who has categorized the so-called unchurched or sa ating ngayon, natin, the secularized. 
and na, na identify niya five kinds of uh, unchurch, five kinds of people who don't believe in a religion, or at least they don't join religion. You know, from U1, meaning unchurch, U2, U3, U4, and U5. Yung U1, um, actually, the this is how it was, uh, kung paano niya na-identify ito, na? ang question that was asked is, what was your what is your attitude towards the towards the church the christian church yung u1 uh, 11% sa kanila is very friendly yung u2 uh, 27% sa kanila ay friendly to the church yung u3 are neutral 36% yung u4 is resistant 21% at yung u5 antagonistic to the church this is rip um, it shows you kung i-divide natin ang U1 represents 11% of all unchurched o kaya of all secular people ang U2 is 27% of all secular people ang U3 ay 36% of all secular people ang U4 ay 21% and then U5 yung totally antagonistic is 5% um, so itong from U1 to U5 if we will go back doon sa ating uh, diagram uh, yung U1 and U2 will be somewhat religious and ambivalent doon sila sa, uh, sa, uh, sa part na yan. Then yung, U, uh, yung U3 would be somewhat secular. And then you have U4 which is very secular. And then you have U5 which is ultra secular. So there are, there's a spectrum na yan. Okay. Another thing we need to, we, uh, that helps us to understand then. Uh, may question ay tinanong sa kanila there was a research done in the US what is your view of God's word or of, of the Bible okay ano ang tingin nila sa and as you can see here sabi rito um, yung U1 55% sa kanila sabi truthful ang, God's, ang, ang Bible it is God's word yung U2 sabi 43% ang nagsabi it is God's word Yung U3, sabi niya, 24% nagsabing it's God's word. Uh, yung U4, 10% believe na it's God's word. But ang U5, none of them believe na it is God's word. So ito, makikita mo yung spectrum. Now, the, um, the most important thing to get out of this one uh, research is this. 90% ng lahat ng U1 and U2 na unchurched. Sabi nila, they would attend a Bible study if someone invited them. Because, uh, sabi nga nito, ang U1, U2, 50, 43 to 55% sa kanan, the Bible is God's word. There's truth in it. Uh, or at least there's some truth in it. So, uh, the, the good news is, sabi nga, 9 out of 10, kung iimbitahan natin na mag-Bible study, mag-attend isang Bible study, they will attend. He will attend. <laughs> so, remember that, okay? Itong information ito. Because at the end, I will share with you five things that you can do to reach secular people. Okay, another question na tinanong sa kanila. Uh, would you come to church if somebody invited you? Okay, and sabi dito, nakita natin, ang U1, U2, very likely, 56% ang U1. Ang U2, 46%, very likely. Um... Then as you go down uh, uh, sa U3, U4, U5, you can see nagiging smaller yung likelihood na they will come to church if you invite them. Um, again, there's the summary. The summary is that more than 8 out of 10 of all unchurched, sabi nila they would come if someone invited them. Again, that's 80% of ng lahat ng mga walang simbahan, lahat ng walang reliyon, they would come if someone invited them. So it's key. The key is, let's invite them. Let's invite them for a Bible study to attend an evangelistic series. Let's invite them to church. Um, hopefully, yung church nyo will be friendly to them. But let's invite them. Okay, now, what are the needs of secular people? And this is very important to remember. Um, okay, number one need is belongingness. They want to feel they belong to, to a group. They want to believe, uh, to feel they belong to something worthy uh, to be part of. And then authenticity. They like to deal with people who are real. 
hindi pwedeng nakikipagkaibigan lang tayo sa kanila para uh, because gusto natin mag i sila. We need, they need to see authenticity sa atin. Yung, yung pagiging totoo. Okay? They also uh, are looking for a sense of worth and purpose. They, they, pag nakita nila na isang Adventist has a sense of purpose and a sense of worth, uh, they are attracted to that. Also, they need something or someone to trust. So, uh, if, you're, if you're a person that is trustworthy, then they will be attracted. If the church pastor is trustworthy, if the elders are trustworthy, then ma-attract nila itong mga secular na mga tao uh, once they are invited. And then they're looking for cert- certainty uh, against the doubts that they, uh, they have. You know, ang mga secular na mga tao, usually exposed sila sa postmodernism. Ang postmodernism, it questions everything. Uh, there's no such thing as right or wrong. There's no such thing as uh, objective truth. Uh, so they are always uncertain. And they need to find certainty in the midst of uncertainty. And finally, they're looking for hope beyond this life. Kasi empty ang life. Uh, katulad ng sinasabi ni, ni, ni Solomon, vanity, vanity. After you have experienced all of this, um, na-experience mo na ang, ang pleasure, na-experience mo na ang, uh, ang power, na, na, ang, ang, ang wealth, then what? They need hope beyond this life. And they are looking for people who, f- who, who can show na meron silang hope beyond this life. Okay, so in closing, how do we reach secularized Filipinos? Uh, let me suggest five things you, could, you can do, which in itself ay maraming mga pwede pang uh, magawa. The first one is, find points of contact or common interest. Katulad ninyo, you are scientists, uh, educators. So, look for something that they uh, that you share with them yung common interest kung physics kung uh, algebra or um, whatever whatever point of interest yeah. yun yung don't kay mag maximize um, and that's what you can talk about that's what you can uh, for starters and then number 2 is Invite, invite them or involve them in worthy activities. Remember, they're looking for a sense of purpose. Yung public service, community service, uh, even sports or mga tours, meron tayong mga example niyan dito sa Metro Manila na uh, they organize tours. Punta sila, nag-hiking sila, nag, punta sila sa Banawi Rice Terraces, meron, meron din silang service na gagawin doon. Uh, so, involve them in worthy activities. Gumawa kayo ng mga uh, mga public service, community service na magagawa ng ninyo together with them. Uh, wag lang po, of course, you need to have Adventists with them para they, they get in touch with Adventists while doing the worthy activities. Uh, Kung baga, we want them, uh, gusto natin mahawa sila sa mga Seventh-day Adventists uh, as they do those things. Number three, Create a community. Uh, very big sila dito sa word na community. Uh, sa atin, we call it care group, okay? Pero uh, let there be a community or care group uh, around common interest and, and public service or some kind of service na magagawa for, for, uh, for people. So, it's, this is... Uh, marami sa mga uh, secular people, they're not just interested in serving themselves or receiving care from other people. They also want to care for others. And so, develop that community. It doesn't have to be in the church building. Uh, Pwede yung, uh, sabi ng iba, cafe life. Okay? Maharing sa uh, Starbucks or sa isang restaurant or or even online. Right? Uh, you can develop a community uh, online. And then number four, follow what I would call inverted evangelism process. Uh, when I say, uh, okay, before I say kung ano inverted uh, process, yung usual traditional evangelism process natin is we want people to believe, we want them to behave, and then we want them to belong. Okay? Believe first by listening to a Bible study, behave first by attending Adventist church, nakikita nila how to behave, and then belong, we develop friendship with them. Pero the inverted evangelism process is this. 
help them first to belong to your group, to belong to a congregation, to belong to a group of Adventists. And then as they join you, katulad nun, meron kayong community service, meron kayong mga uh, tours or sports like that, eh, pero nagkakalang kayo ng worship time or uh, some activities, Bible study activities, then they start behaving like you. Uh, out of place kasi sila, kung magsisigarilo sila, well, the rest of you are not. Okay? It's not that you're telling them not to hindi uh, magsigarilo or something. Pero as they see you, sabi niya, by beholding, they become changed. Behavior. And then, when they are ready, then you start sharing. Why do you do the things that you do? So they can believe uh, through a Bible study or through sharing or something like that. So it's an inverted evangelism process. Belong, behave, and then believe. And finally, invite them to your church, either on-site or online. Hopefully, in church mode will be a uh, secular friendly church uh, or a millennial friendly church. Um, or maybe you can develop it into just a care group. Huh? Um, so invite them. Kasi sabi, 80 to 90% of them will join or will attend. Not necessarily become Adventists yet. Pero they will attend your church or a Bible study group if someone will invite them. So reaching secular people is doable. And uh, my prayer is that as you continue to encourage one another sa inyong mga interest, sa science, and uh, sa inyong mga inventions and, and, and things like that, discoveries, um, you, you can befriend as many of the people in the science world, uh, the scientists and the uh, inventors, and that you can find the points of contact, you can invite them and involve them in worthy uh, public service or sports or tours, and you can create a community with them uh, and with other Adventists. And then as you follow inverted evangelism process, you can also invite them to your church. Uh, and as you do that, uh, I believe there will be uh, some who will decide to be part of this um, the Adventist church. So God bless you all. And I hope you were... Um, I hope na nakatulong po sa inyo ito ating... Uh, discussion on how to reach, understand, and to reach secular people. So again, God bless and uh, more power to uh, your um, conference um, in the next few days. Okay, good afternoon everyone. We are so happy and grateful that uh, uh, our program is uh, successful. So I'm requesting those who are still outside to please come inside now. Um, we are moving, we are transitioning now to the last part of our um, conference. But before uh, going into the commitment service, we would like to um, recognize some people who have contributed to the progress and the success of our uh, seminar. So I would like to invite uh, Dr. Brian to please come forward. Yeah. I know you are preparing your commitment message. <laughs> Okay, so we will distribute to you the first, the uh, certificate of participation. But we will not be distributing this individually because it will take time. So what we did, we just put them in one union and uh, we, will, the, we will just be calling the uh, education director of the union or conference to come forward and then just kindly distribute that uh, this uh, certificate to your uh, educators or science educators who are here. 
So, I would like to start uh, recognizing and appreciating the was this the education directors of the union for your effort. I know it's not easy to uh, was this uh, inviting people. You know, it was just a short uh, time. I think it's only about one month and a half because uh, we did not really uh, plan for this. Only that we see some extra budget. So I said, maybe we can do something. So just imagine one and a half month and then sending you the information and it's the responsibility of the Union Educational Directors to disseminate information, uh, making arrangements, asking permission from the different uh, missions and conferences. So, I would like to thank the Northern or North Philippine Union Conference. Okay, so I'm requesting the Education Director, Ma'am Sabat, Dr. Sabat, thank you very much. We really appreciate your coming. I know it's a challenge coming over, but you have come. So thank you, thank you very much. Then I would like to call the Education Director of Central Philippine Union Conference. Kindly, the delegates, if you can stand together with your... Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Limwell Bandai. Salamat yod kayo. Okay. Salamat. The last but not the least is South Philippine Union Conference. Oh, kindly, you can stand while uh, Dr. Pido uh, comes. Thank you very much. Okay, now I would like to... So, okay, ito na yung pasalamatan ng mga tao ni. First, the host. Kaya kung wala pa ang host, wata dire. So, we are very happy that in a short notice, they nodded and said, no problem, we are willing to accommodate you. So, we would like to extend our appreciation to Mountain View College Administration. Uh, Pastor Brian, can you read the citation? Uh, sino mag-represent sa Mountain View College? Is the president around? The vice president or... Bisa kinsa na lang siguro nga delegate nga gikan sa the MVC, principal. principal. High school principal. Okay, please come. Okay. Salamat. May we invite the high school principal of MVC? Okay. Yes. Sige, ito uh, na basaho ni citation. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. So, the Southern Asia Pacific Division of the SDA Church Education Department presents this Certificate of Appreciation to Mountain View College for hosting the Tri-Union Science Educators and Adventist Scientists Conference held on August 4 to 6, 2022 with the theme, Integration of Creation Science in Teaching and Mission. Your long-held tradition of warm hospitality in this awe-inspiring campus has significantly contributed to the success and impact of the said event. Truly, the God of creation resides in this beautiful hilltop. Given the sixth day of August 2022 at MVC Valencia City, Bukidnon, signed by Dr. Mergal, Director, Education Department, by myself, uh, Associate Director, and Pastor Roger Kaderma, President of SSD. Uh, 
Okay. Um, we have two special people. Hindi ginamok makalimtan. Why? Because as I have mentioned, in a short time, they responded. Kasi we are always traveling. We have no time to plan. We have no time to arrange with uh, Mountain View College administration. Unya budget, so on so forth. So we are really very grateful to these people. So at this juncture, I would like to call on Mr. or Dr. Romy Lamputi, the Associate Education Director of uh, South Philippine Union Conference. I tell you, I really appreciate this man. Kung mo ano himi din he sa ano sa sa SPUC, kanuna yung mi sugaton niya, and then he will serve as our driver. I tell you, I really salute the servant attitude of this guy. Yes, thank you. Um, Saromi, please accept this certificate from the SSD Education Department, given on the sixth day of August. 2022 at MVC for your dedicated and untiring service in making the conduct of the Tri-Union Science Educators and Adventist Science Conference, Scientists Conference a success and fitting offering to the master teacher. Your passion for serving the educative ministry is always evident in your leadership and commitment to excellence. Please accept this, signed by Dr. Mergal and I and Pastor Roger Federer. Okay, now another important person, the Education Director of South Philippine Union Conference. I tell you, she was the one who made the budget, she was the one who made the arrangement. In fact, okay, so mga certificates. Tanan, mga pabaon, mga bring home. Kini siya ang nag, uh, I tell you, yesterday, uh, wala yung tao ni siya ka-attend, tungod kay Adtuman sa Valencia. And then besides, last uh, last week, there was also your, what's this? Uh, this week, the uh, educator's colloquium, I tell you. There were about 900, more than 900. Almost 1,000 teachers were here, and I tell you, she was very busy. But in spite of that, uh, she's willing to extend her service to us. So thank you, Anak. Uh, I called her Anak. Thank you very much. Thank you. And of course, Dinako ni Kalimtan kay ako na puding anak. Certificate of appreciation to my partner in the ministry. Always with me. Okay, tell you. Kung wala ni, I don't know what will happen. But I'm very grateful for my partner, Dr. Brian Edward Sumindap. Okay. I would like to read a citation. Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Brian Subinda for imparting your valuable insights as one of the guest speakers during the Tri-Union Science Educators and Adventist Scientist Convention held on August 4 to 6, 2022 at Mountain View College with the theme, Integration of Creation Science in Teaching. Signed, Dr. Mergal and uh, Pastor Kaderma. So thank you, Nak. Huh? Thank you. Okay. So don't worry. Pag uli mo may may durian. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. So we are also grateful to the Hope Channel. Anak, Hope Channel, no? They really help us. So and then the Mountain View College media team. Uh, thank you very much. Let us give a big hand to them. And also 
the media department there who helped me for two nights. They were there up to 12 o'clock just to be with me during the GRI meeting. They really sacrificed for me, so thank you very much. Okay, and of course, I would like to express my thanks to my two secretaries, our two secretaries, Faith and uh, Mrs. Asoy, Mrs. Pastrana. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much for your help. And of course, the Philippine Association of Adventist uh, Scientists. They are still here. Ah, sir, ang iba sa ilato sa back. Can you stand, uh, PAS? Oh, wow. With the leadership of Dr. Oklarit, who is the president. Sir, thank you very much. You are, you are the powerhouse of this uh, conference because most of the presenters were coming from the PAS. My wife is also a member of PAS. So, I think about 90% of the presenters were coming from the PAS. So, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, PAS. Huh? Okay, the secretariat who really helped in preparing the certificates. Okay, I tell you. The, what's this? The tarpaulin and also the decoration here, everything. So thank you very much. Siguro ang among words is not really enough, but we are very, very grateful to you. Si Ma'am uh, Pido na ang bahala sa inyo. <laughs> so we give that assignment to Ma'am Pido. Okay, and of course, to our beloved teachers, our principals who are here. Kung may time lang unta mi, isiparit mo na mo og uh, meeting, principal, and so, so, but we don't have time. But we really appreciate your coming, and I hope the things that you have learned here will be very profitable in your teaching ministry that starting probably when you go back to your school, you will continue in a more intensive an appropriate way integrating creation science origin in your teaching and also in the mission of the church so um, by the way those of you who have not gotten yet the was this the creation science pin the creation sabbath pin we still have some extras. So after this meeting, you can come to us and then ask. I think we still have, yeah. Some of you already received, but we still have some extras. But for those who have received already, uh, don't ask anymore because, <laughs> because we only about 100. That's why we distributed it when the others were out. So that it will be enough for everyone. <laughs> okay, but we still have. Okay, we still have, I think about uh, 30 or 40. So, we still have. Uh, we, we will add to that, Dr. Mergal. We still have extra Creation Sabbath t-shirts, but the sizes are just small and extra small. So, if you are that small, please approach uh, Faith. Okay? Small, I think there are around five, so I hope it fits. Because for sure, extra small doesn't fit me. So, yes, we still have okay. some. Thank you very much. Maybe next time we will really print a t-shirt. Yes. Uh, we will put a budget for this. But, you know, because of our limited budget, we just make sure that we can take care of the accommodation as well as the, uh, your, 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 what's this, your board. Yes, and uh, these t-shirts and pins are from the GRI. Yeah. It was sent through Dr. Jorge Rasmerita, so there is just a limited supply. Therefore, we couldn't give to everyone. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we have this book, Design and Catast 
catastrophe. Scientists explore evidence in nature. So, we are assigning this to the different colleges. So, for your library. So, kung may library, uh, kung na din ang librarian, kindly get one for your library. And then, we still have some extra. Then, we can give this to the different, uh, to the different academies. So, ang principal nga ni Adinhe, pwede ka mo makakuha para sa inyong, para sa uh, library ninyo. Okay? So, you can get one for your academy. Okay? So, I don't know if this will be enough, but tell us if it's not enough, then we can make an order so that every library will have, should have a copy of this. This is a very important document. Okay. Uh, Please do not be very happy yet because we only have a very few extras. Yeah. But for sure, we will try to provide for yeah. each academy. Yes. Okay. So I think that's all. We are happy for your participation. We are looking forward to have another one next year because uh, I propose to the Geoscience Research Institute that this will be yearly program that they will come visit us personally. And then by 2024, we are planning to have a division-wide uh, science educators conference in Thailand. And it is, yeah, so that's our target. I have presented that to the GRI already, that 2024, before my retirement. <laughs> before my retirement, we can have our uh, division-wide uh, science educators uh, convention. So let's look forward, let's pray that somehow the Lord sustain us, we will be able to realize this one. Well, uh, from here, of course, we will be separating our ways. Uh, we will also be traveling at about 4 o'clock, going back to Manila. We will not go home anymore. We will proceed to Indonesia. And when we go back, we will go back on the 18th of August because we also have to visit the colleges there for accreditation. So we will be meeting na sa September siguro. <laughs> so thank you very much. Pray for us. We'll be praying for you. Let's pray for one another for this travel. But I am not so worried about that because my wife is with me. Uh, Dr. Brian, problema kay wala asawa. Uh, Bili na yung asawa. But in going to these colleges, I have planned that my wife should be with me and I'm very happy that I am not guilty of the lecture that was presented this afternoon. <laughs> okay, Dr. Ruina, it's a challenge for you also. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dr. Mergal, before we proceed uh, with our commitment service, we just need to uh, remind you that tonight our dinner is at the Florence Kern Auditorium. Auditorium. Okay? So do not go to the cafeteria because there's no food for you there. Let's proceed there. The food will be available by 7. So we still have time for the closing program. So it's like a fellowship uh, banquet. meal. Okay. It's a banquet. So don't miss this uh, opportunity. This is a way of fellowshipping ourselves, knowing each other. I think the food is not really that important. What is important is before we segregate or separate with one another, we have that fellowship. But you will not regret if you will go there. There is durian, our fruits, and so on and so forth. Okay. So again, thank you very much. We are ready now to proceed to our uh, commitment service.
Who among us here can say, I mean, who among us here have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, gracious, and ultra wise through this triunion scientific conference? Please say amen. 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 At this point, we shall now give the time to Mr. Ranzalin Banyeta for the Banyeta, yep, Banyeta for the commitment service. Thank you. Okay, so good evening everyone. We are now coming to an end in this three-day tri-union science educators and Adventist scientists conference. We feel like it's not enough, right? But the good news is we will be meeting you again next year. Okay, I believe it's always a joy when we come together with meeting people with the same passion with the same interest, and we come together to reason out and to share also important findings of your studies. If I have to, to summarize and to look for the common denominator of all the presentations, one dominant theme is God exists. God is an excellent designer as it is exhibited by nature and the human body. And also through this conference, we are united as, we are reminded as science educators and scientists that we have this solemn vow that through science, we could lead our students and people to a living relationship with their God. Allow me to, to read the, the sequence of our service. By the way, we are now coming to a commitment service. And a commitment service is a sacred service. This is the time that once again, we will be recommitted to the mission that God appointed to us. After my part, we will be singing our opening hymn. And the, on, the invocation will be offered by Mom Mimosa Sarong. Our special music will be offered by the ACA Melody, and these are the MVCA Choir. Our speaker will be introduced by Sir Billy Manoop, and after the introduction, we'll be hearing the, the commitment message. And then a commitment song by My Redeemer's Symphony of the South Philippine Adventist College. And then we have the charge and dedicatory prayer by Dr. Benvenido Mergal and a closing hymn and a benediction by Sir Sam Padis. Our commitment service this evening will, will follow as I have announced.
return, our years the same. Father in heaven, we praise you for this Sabbath. We praise you for preserving our lives until this very moment. We praise your dear Heavenly Father for all the inspiring messages that we have heard all throughout the Sabbath. Dear God, thank you for the opportunity of bringing us here to attend this special event, the Tri-Union Science Educators in the Adventist Scientist Conference. We thank you for our leaders in the SSD who have initiated this conference. We thank you as well for all the inputs that have been shared to us by these knowledgeable lecturers and scientists all throughout this event. Indeed, you are the magnificent God who have created this vast universe and everything on it, including our lives. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to get a touch with you, that we may be able to have an intimate relationship with you. Father, we are about to end this meeting, but before we will conclude, we would like to commit our lives unto you, acknowledging that you are the source of all, including the wisdom that we needed each day, as we continue to serve you as educators in your vineyard. Bless the participants as well to our dear speaker, Dr. Brian Sumendap. May you will empower him with your Holy Spirit. Make him as your mouthpiece, that is our, that we will be more inspired and be more committed in serving you in your different institutions. It is our sincere prayer that you will continually use us for your glory. Thank you for forgiving all our sins and for listening this humble request. In their Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I count it a joy and privilege to introduce to you our speaker for this commitment service. Our speaker is a native of Manado, Indonesia. He was born into a pastoral family and have had a desire to be a pastor since his early years. He eventually went to study theology and advanced studies till he obtained a Doctor of Ministry degree at Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies. Since 2002, Pastor Sumindap had served in various responsibilities in Indonesia. He started working in 2002 as a Bible teacher and a vice principal for student services at a boarding school. He then went on to continue as a pastoral intern, then a chaplain, an English teacher, and was ordained into the gospel ministry in 2007. Before coming to SSD as the Associate Education Director, he served as the Vice President for Student Services of his alma mater, Ayas. He enjoys connecting with young people, encouraging them to be closer to Jesus. He is married to a beautiful Filipina from South Philippines particularly in the Durian capital, Davao City, Joy D.V. Munkayo, who was trained as a dentist, but eventually became a teacher and is now working at the IAS admissions office. The Sumindap family have been blessed with two children, Edward and Eliza. It is my honor to present to you our commitment speaker, Dr. Brian Edward Sumindap. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished uh, teachers and scientists, Adventist scientists. You know, as we end our meetings for the for the con for the conference, part of me feels that. Uh, we need to listen more. But on the other hand, part of me says also, we, we need to rest for a while and start again next year. <laughs> Nevertheless, the presentations has been a blessing for me personally. I, for one, is an, I am not really interested in science. Because when I was in high school, you know, I... My principal at that time wanted me to be a doctor. But unfortunately, my biology teacher, as we were going to the uh, grade 8 for specialization, gave me a 5, which is a failing grade for biology. So I hated the teacher, and I didn't want to have anything to do with science anymore. But through the 
lectures that I, that I followed and listened to, indeed, it had sparked again my interest in science. So thank you very much. It has been a blessing for me, and I believe it has been a blessing for each one of us. I've entitled our... Um, okay. I've entitled our uh, devotional talk this evening, The Kind of Men and Women That God Needs. You know, when we talk about the theory of evolution, uh, Charles Darwin's theory is described as new, uh, as this, that this theory believes that new species arise naturally by a process of evolution rather than having been created forever immutable by God. So there have been questions asked about the theory of evolution. But even Darwin admitted that this work was incomplete. Vast questions were still unanswered, and the biggest question was, how? How did evolution take place? However, by 1950, acceptance of Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection was universal among biologists, and the synthetic theory had become widely adopted. But then, what are those questions about the theory of evolution? Uh, what is evolution, of course? What is macroevolution versus ma microevolution? What is operational science versus origin science? What are assumptions and thought systems? Has macroevolution been observed? Are there many, any credible tra tra transitional fossils? Did life original fr originate from non-life by science? Is evolution a proven theory? So in spite of the fact that it is popular, it is being uh, accepted by many scientists, there are still questions about it. And so the, sci the Bible, the science and creation is what we, we have been talking about, right? Throughout the past two days. And George Tavor in an article, Life and Evidence for Creation, says this, thinking about life's origin, we can walk on one of two mutually exclusive paths. Life on Earth could have been created by an extraterrestrial creator, or it could have come into existence by a fortunate interplay of nature's forces. You know, scientists, at their best when they study repeatable phenomena will find that there are no solar system forming before our eyes. Even worse, we also do not see any natural forces producing living organism from solely non-living matter. Yet, millions of different life forms that we see around us had to originate somewhere. And that is the reason why we have this kind of conferences to, uh, to strengthen our understanding and to be encouraged to continue trusting on creation and to continue sharing this with our students, whether they're in high school or in university. There was a survey done by the Gallup survey organization. They found out that 40% of U.S. adults ascribed strictly to a creationist view of human origin. So this is interesting. This 40% of adults, they believe that God created them in their present form within roughly the past 10,000 years. However, Gallup says, more Americans continue to think that humans evolved over millions of years, either with God's guidance or increasingly without God's involvement at all. So th there are now people who believe that the solution to evolution would be 
theistic evolution. Theistic evolution believes that God used processes of evolution to create implies at least believing an account of origins at odds with a biblical record of history. It also implies introducing the presence of death before sin or at least defining death in different ways before sin and after sin. So for some Christians, they think that this is the best way to solve the problem of evolution. However, this does not go, go well with what the Bible teaches. And so the challenge for us now is, can Christians teach science and remain faithful to their beliefs? Of course, you will immediately say, of course, Pastor, we can. But you know, some people, they are convinced, yeah? Oh, what's happening here? Some people, they are convinced that uh, it is it is not easy. Just like uh, oil and vinegar, they create appetizing salad dressing. Anyone who desires to, to do so, to teach science and remain faithful, can find well-orchestrated compatibility between the Word of God and science. And with that in mind, we find that there is... Uh, Richard Dawkins, who wrote the book, The God Delusion. He believes that if anyone who reads his book, he said, if this book works as I intend, religious readers who open it will be atheists when they put it down. So he contends that science and religion is incompatible so what then do we do as Christian scientists as Adventist scientists and science teachers I want us to take a look at what Apostle Paul charged Timothy with Apostle Paul charged Timothy in 1st Timothy 2 verse 2 he said this and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, in trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. In this charge, we find that God is leading Timothy through Apostle Paul to be propagating the truth, the gospel, through teaching and that they will be teaching others and therefore there forms a continuous cycle of learning and teaching. And I think this is a very effective method and an adequate method, but it only works when we find the right kind of men and women. That's the title of our devotional. So, let us try to consider the kind of men and women that God needs. First, I want to propose that God needs faithful men and women. Faithful men and women who are faithful to the Lord. Hebrews 3 verse 2 says, He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Moses was faithful to God. Therefore, we should be men and women who are faithful to God. Just as Apostle Paul was counted faithful. 1 Timothy 1 verse 12 says, I thank Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has given me strength that he considered me trustworthy appointing me to his service. So, my dear colleagues, teachers, scientists, we need to be faithful to the Lord. Secondly, God needs faithful men and women 
who are faithful to God's word, to the word. Again, in 2 Timothy 1 verse 13, Apostle Paul is saying, What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. So as we teach, as we look at scientific data, as we share it with others, we need to let it coincide with the truth, the Bible truth. And then, the we need to be faithful to the word by what Apostle Paul is exhorting us to be keep reminding God's people of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words of its, if it is of no value and only ruins those who listen. Use the Bible. Be faithful to God's word. And I propose that God needs faithful men and women who are faithful to the church, who are faithful to their own brothers and sisters among whom they will serve the Lord on their behalf. Therefore, we need to be serving our brothers and sisters like Epaphras did at the church at Colossae. So, in other words, I want to read what uh, a Bible commentator, John Gill, who was an English Baptist pastor, a biblical scholar, and a theologian, wrote. He said this, We are in need of men and women who not only have received the grace of God and are true believers in Christ, but are men and women, I will add women here, of great uprightness and integrity, who having the word of God will speak it out boldly and faithfully and keep back nothing that is profitable but declare the whole counsel of God without any mixture of adulteration for the gospel being committed to their trust they would become stewards and of such it is required that they be faithful and therefore it is mentioned as necessary and requisite qualification in them oh that's a mouthful but the description of John Gill is very similar to what Ellen White wrote in the education page 57. I believe we all memorize this, right? The greatest need of the world is the want of men, men who will not be bought or sold, men who in their inmost souls are true and honest, men who do not fear to call sin by its right name, men whose conscience is as true to duty as the needle to the pole, men who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. Wow. You know, we also find that Mrs. White not just say uh, said that this is an important thing, need, which is an important need. But she also added in several places that our greatest need, not only are these men and women, but this when men and women described here, who will have the Holy Spirit present in their lives. She said that the greatest need is the presence of Holy Spirit in our lives. She also said that the revival of true godliness among us is the greatest and most urgent of all our needs. So there are three things that Mrs. White emphasized as an urgent need for us this time. Men and women who are described here and the, rev uh, the revival of true godliness and the presence of the Holy Spirit among us. Let's continue to see uh, the needs, the person that God needs. God, I want to propose to you, needs teachable men and women. Men and women who are willing to be taught by others. Right? Men and women who are willing to be taught by by those around us in the family, by those 
who have more experience than us. For example, uh, Timothy, in 2 Timothy 1 verse 5, he was taught by his mother and grandmother, who was willing, Timothy later on, was willing to go with Apostle Paul and be taught by him. So, the point here is that God needs teachable men and women who are willing to be students first, then teachers. And then, God needs teachable men and women who are willing to be taught by themselves. What does it mean to be taught by themselves? That we need to study, to study the Bible before we study anything else so that we are sure through the help of the Holy Spirit that the truths, the science that we study will be compatible with what the Bible is teaching us. And then we, the third thing that I want to see is that I want to propose is that God needs teaching men and women. Willing to teach other men and women. Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 4, 27, For this reason I have sent to you Timothy, my son, whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord, and he will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. God needs teaching men and women who are willing to teach according to their Abilities. In fact, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 29, Apostle, Apostle Paul says, Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all do miracle works? We need to be teaching according to our specialties and our specialization. And so, I would like to also propose that Adventist scientists and science teachers, they will have these characteristics. The first characteristic that I would like to propose is that you are teachers and scientists who are pressing toward the goal. Philippians 3.13 and 14 says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And I believe the goal of Adventist scientists and Adventist uh, and science teachers is to uphold creationism. That we teach this to our students so that even though someday our students will go to public universities and to learn more about this, they have the foundations that they will continue to believe that God created this earth, that in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. The second characteristic that I want to see, I want to propose for you, is that we, you need to be creative. You need to be creative because Romans 15 verse 4 says, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we may have hope. We need to be creative in teaching these truths to our students. We need to be creative in finding ways to communicate these truths to the context of our students right now. Make it interesting so they will love what you are teaching them. And... Edward de Bono Edward de Bono says this There is no doubt that creativity is the most important human resources of all without creativity there would be no progress and we would be forever repeating the same patterns so cre be be creative and finally be committed scientists and science teachers. Teacher commitment has been recognized as one of the most critical factors in effective teaching. Committed teachers, according to Hariri and Suminotono, 
they are characterized by four qualities. That they have a desire to be good teachers. They are being more fact purveyors and sources. They are recognizing and accepting individual worth and meeting professional responsibilities. But I want to also propose that we are committed to the Lord. Not just to our profession, but we are committed to the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. In another passage in the Old Testament, 1 Kings 8 verse 61 says, And may your hearts be fully committed to the Lord our God to live by His decrees and obey His commands at this time. Commitment to God is necessary. As I look to God's creation, as I look to God's creation, I found out that parakeets are social animals that feel lonely and sad when they have no company. And it is one of the most faithful animals to their partner. They need a partner alongside in their cage so that they can be happy. Another uh, creation that is faithful is the swan. Swans live in pairs. In the winter months, in the cold months, they are known to already be in heat. And when they meet a potential partner, swans swim near one another and perform special neck movements. They form long-term relationships with their partner. And even after death, they never seek another partner again. Committed. Sana all. <laughs> and then we find the owl. Owls are faithful birds. And they remain monogamous to their partner. Not only during the breeding season, but all year round. They work together in the care and feeding of their young. Wow. God has created animals to be committed to each other. God has created humans to be committed to, to each other as well. But mostly, God has created humans to be committed to God, as we have seen in the Bible passages. And there is one thing uh, interesting that Mrs. White writes about commitment. Mrs. White says this, I am instructed that every believer must watch unto prayer lest he fail in the Christian life battle. Every soul must daily seek the Lord with full purpose of heart, morning, noon, and night, and let the mind dwell upon the Word of God to understand His requirements. This Day with God, page 128. Commitment will happen if we seek the Lord with full purpose of heart. And I believe that when we are committed to God, it is not God that will benefit from that relationship, right? It is us who will benefit from that relationship. And I find that true with parasite commensalism. Right? Parasite commensalism is a symbiotic relationship in which one species benefits while the other species is not affected. Parasitism is a symbiotic relationship which the parasite benefits while the host is harmed. In many ways, sometimes we, our actions harm God. But we are encouraged, nevertheless, to commit our lives to Him. But God is good. He has created the examples of His creation, animals to, to be committed to one another. And even in the example of a parasite, He has, he has created the pattern of commitment, even though the host will not benefit. You know, if you make a commitment, even if God will not benefit, God is willing to accept us. 
right? To accept us. This is the parasite who benefits from the host. And I think because God wants us to be committed to Him, He is inviting each one of us to be that men and women that God wants. After looking at all the, the proposals that I have shared, I believe the last thing that we can gain from this short devotional is that God is inviting us into a full commitment with Him. To, to be committed in the understanding of science according to the Bible. To be committed as teachers who wishes to see that their students will continue to grow in their intellect, to grow in their abilities to do experiments, scientific discoveries, but still grounded in God's Word. And to be committed to become God's worker in promoting not only science, but in promoting Jesus Christ in our everyday life to others. And this is what I want to share with you this evening. May we be scientists and teachers that are committed to God until Jesus comes. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Brian, for reminding us this evening about the most significant commitment that we need to have with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Before I go into the dedicatory prayer, allow me to share some thoughts, and then after that, the charts, and then the dedicatory prayer. Two important things as we look into the creation of man. You can find that in Genesis 1, 26, and 27. There are two things that we can identify ourselves as teachers. You know, in verse 26, it says that God created man in his own image and likeness. What is this? Creation in God's image and likeness. Of course, there are many scholars who had different explanations about this. But to me, being created in God's image is a status that is invoked upon us. And by virtue of this status, we can generate an idea that God has chosen us. And I would like to impress that word, you and I are chosen by God. And then if you go ver to verse 27, it says, and they were commanded to go multiply and then replenish the earth, have dominion. What is this? In other words, after man was given that status of being chosen by God, then the Lord has given him the stewardship role, the missional role. And to me, the second important thought that is found in this verse is, yes, God had chosen us, and now he has elected us for a stewardship and missional role. So, you teachers, based on the creation concept, we teachers, leaders, based on the creation concept, we are all chosen and we are all elected for His glory and for His mission. So, if, with this understanding, I would like to make a charge to all of you. I charge you to continue your I charge you to be committed to your calling as science educators and scientists. 
I charge you to continue to grow in knowledge in your area of specialization and professional practice. In all opportunities, integrate the fundamental truth of creation in your teaching and outreach. Serve your students and significant others in humble service that through your teaching, they may know God more fully. Second, I charge you to continue in your stewardship and missional role to advance the cause of God. Go, teach your students the power of the gospel. Imbue them with the principles of truth that they may be men and women of integrity ready to proclaim God's love. Lastly, I charge you to be committed to God and to his word. Go entrust your life to him. Make your spirituality a priority of your life. Establish an enduring and lasting relationship with God. With this charge, I'm inviting you now to stand as we have the dedicatory prayer. For those who are outside of this room, of this hall, I am inviting you to please come inside as we have this dedicatory and also a commitment prayer. In fact, I would invite you if you can come closer. So if you can move forward, I would appreciate that very much because we believe that this is our commitment to God that His blessings and directions will be upon us before separating each other. So again, I am requesting you to come forward. We'll have this uh, special prayer for you. Uh, Pastor Brian, please come forward. Okay, thank you. We still have some spaces here. Find your place. It's good to be together as we ask the Lord's blessing as we dedicate ourselves to Him. Okay? Thank you very much. Let's pray. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, the Lord we are standing before the throne of grace to praise you and to thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to come and attend this very significant conference, the Science Educators and Philippine Adventists uh, Association uh, Conference. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for the direction that you have given to the organizers as well as those who have assisted in the preparation. Loving Heavenly Father, we know that it's only through your grace that we were able to make this. The Lord, it was in our thinking impossible to make this. But the Lord, thank you in proving to us, showing to us the evidence that so long as we entrust everything into your hands, you are there, ready to help us. Loving Heavenly Father, this evening, here are the dedicated education leaders, teachers, scientists, who have come to hone their learning, to participate, to involve themselves. And this is, the Lord, an opportunity where we can also fellowship with one another to have that relationship with one another so that, the Lord, we can be inspired as we join our hands in the finishing of your work. So, loving Father, now they are standing before you. In a special way, we would like to pray for them. Lord, yes, they have this expertise. They have the training. They have the experience. But the Lord, we know 
that these things are just nothing unless, Lord, you bless this. So, Lord, I pray that your special blessings be upon the expertise of our people. Bless them, Lord, as they continue to serve their students. Lord, help them to develop, help them to uh, make this uh, gift that you have given to them be a blessing, not only to our schools, but also to others. Loving Heavenly Father, sustain them with the things that they need materially. Dear Lord, we are in this pandemic time. We are confronted with a lot of challenges, particularly when it comes to the finance of the school. But the Lord, we entrust this thing into your hand. We know that you will not leave us. Yes, we are living in a stormy times. But Lord, you have remind us, reminded us never to entertain a doubt of your leading because we are a special people chosen. We are special people elected for your cause. So loving Father, kindly bless them, help them. And I also pray, the Lord, that you will sustain them with good health and strength. The Lord, they may, be have, they may have some challenges when it comes to their health. Lord, I pray that your uh, presence, your sustenance, your guidance will be upon them. Lord, take care of them. Especially, Lord, uh, some of them will be leaving tonight and tomorrow. Lord, kindly be with them as they travel. Protect them, Lord, from any accident. Help them that they may be able to arrive their home safely. Loving Father, I pray that you will continue to bless them when it comes to the, their teaching. The Lord, they have challenges when it comes to the content of their teaching, the relationship with their students, and how to integrate this important truth in their lesson plans, in their modules. But we just pray, dear Lord, that through your Holy Spirit, you will guide them. The Lord, we pray that you will also teach us lessons in life, that you will never detach us from pains and problems, because it is only through these things, Lord, that we become closer to you, that we prove our faith to you, that we can come to you in totality. But the Lord, help us that when we are confronted with these challenges, you will also assure us with your leading and care so that their Lord, as we witness all these things, then we will see how good you are in our life. Loving Heavenly Father, we will be with our family members, immediate family uh, members. Kindly, Lord, help them too. They are our inspiration as we serve you. Kindly sustain them with your grace. Help them so that their Lord, they can continue also to support the work. Lord, we are living in the last days. The challenge is before us. We are chosen. We are elected for your cause. And we are looking forward, dear Lord, that we will be able to mold the minds of our students to help them become transformed and that when Jesus Christ comes, all of us will be uh, rejoicing because some of our students would come to us and say, Teacher, thank you very much for your effort in transforming our lives. So Lord, now we would like to dedicate to you these educators, these leaders, these scientists, the Lord be with them. Help them, Lord, that they can continue the work that you have entrusted them, that you have entrusted them. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will be upon them now as we raise our hands over them together with Pastor Brian. Lord, as we raise our hands over them, this is a gesture of our humble pleading that your blessings be upon us, that you will sustain us through, that you will forgive us, that you will help us be successful in the work as you have entrusted to us. We pray in the loving name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
Amen. Okay. Thank you. You may go back now to your respective sets. designer of the whole universe and we have clearer, clearer view 
of your character because of the presentations we have learned. Dismiss us now with your blessings through the power of the Holy Spirit till eternity. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.